Hi everyone, this is Dawn here with a video, um, Soul Share. I want to share a little bit about uh, four Josephs. Um, and this first little context, this summer I've been traveling and uh, was in uh, Montana, California, then along the Blue Ridge Parkway of Virginia, and finally in New Mexico, and then back here in Georgia, Tennessee area. And um, in all of those locations this summer, I had um, encounters uh, that seemed random, but it's very clear now we're quite uh, divinely inspired and guided with um, members of various tribes um, uh, in Native American tradition um, and conversations with um, in particular, the Blackfeet in Montana and the Santo Domingo Pueblo and Navajo in out west in Santa Fe. I do not know the, uh, the particular tribe of the person I spoke with in California, um, but beautiful conversation there as well. And then uh, Cherokee primarily in the southeastern United States. And in these various encounters were... Uh, very meaningful to me personally, and I understood the collective issues that were being brought to my attention as I travel. I'm often connecting with the land and the people and uh, doing sort of a combination um, of, um, it's like a gathering of energies, some from the earth and calling them forth. So there's a little bit of that uh, role, but also uh, healing, uh, a healing uh, dynamic or, or element to that work that I do when I'm just naturally traveling and often I don't know I don't plan where I'm gonna go I just it's it's it is planned but I don't know why often until I am there and this summer in particular it's been quite connected to the land and to uh, I think of it as the rivers beneath the earth or inside the earth somehow and um, a calling forth of streams of native uh, wisdom and these conversations that uh, have been so meaningful to me personally but only very recently in the last week or two have I realized the connection to the journey that I and many of us have been making and the necessity of all of us connecting to this in a more powerful way and so often when I'm traveling, um, it's, I'm always guided somehow by one of these random encounters, not so random encounters, um, or by, you know, kind of spirit just kind of giving me a signal of some kind to, I, I just know what to connect into, and it's, it changes based on where I am, and again, never planned, and so there is a flow of energy that flows through me, and often that comes through in a... Um, a combination of song and chants um, or um, a calling forth again a calling forth and so this has been very present with me in the last couple of weeks and I had um, I had a um, very um, series of um, series of uh, awarenesses in this last week or two uh, that I want to tell you about so that is the context and I am just realizing before I go any further, it is 2.22 p.m. However, my computer battery is at 7%, and I don't want it to die because I actually recorded this earlier um, uh, on a different day, and uh, the video uh, didn't record everything. So give me just a moment. I'm going to go plug in elsewhere, and I'll be back with the rest. Hey again, so the computers apparently decided not to charge, so I'm on my phone, um, but I'm not going to stop in terms of recording this for you because it is important. Um, I will come back at the end when my computer does decide to charge again or I get to a different computer and record um, the, the main uh, message, which is from Chief Joseph of the Nez Pierce. Um, I've had a long-standing connection with that story, as many of us, I think, do, um, in particular those of us who um, are American and understand the full context of that. So I'm going to, at the end, I'm going to close with that. So let me tell you a little bit about how this, you know, kind of came um, came up for me in the last couple of weeks. I was reflecting on my encounters um, in New Mexico, in particular with a couple um, from the Santo Domingo uh, 
Pueblo. Um, again, it's a divinely inspired kind of meeting and um, it was amazing. Um, I was at a Indian market. I just happened to be driving down the interstate, um, going from one destination to the other um, on, coincidentally or not, the same day that I was shown <laughs> that where I flew into um, in New Mexico and where I was staying and in, in, I flew into Albuquerque, I was staying in the Santa Fe area and uh, I was guided by spirit. I was given the number 49.9 <laughs> um, and um, asked to look up um, a location between those two that made a triangle. And so I did and looked it up and it was a place I'd never uh, heard of called, um, I believe it's, I believe it's Stanley, New Mexico. Um, and when I Googled that, um, it, it turns out that is where, um, uh, what's his name, Jeffrey Epstein had his uh, ranch house of horrors, whatever he wants to call that, in terms of um, child trafficking and um, sex trade. And so it was clear to me at that, from that moment, that I was there to do some form of clearing in, in regard to that um, particular issue. And um, that's sensitive area for me personally. And so, um, you know, it's a little... At first, I, to be honest, it, it dampened my spirits a little bit because New Mexico was sort of my like joy reward trip <laughs> after, or at least that's how I was seeing it. Now, I mean, I had a wonderful summer and so it's a little selfish on my part. But right after that awareness, I, I had stopped somewhere to where I had Wi-Fi to, to figure that part out and um, then was guided to this um, Indian market um, that uh, was occurring. And I met several people at that market who were... Um, from various tribes, um, Navajo and um, Santo Domingo, Pueblo being the primary in-depth conversations that I had with these individuals. And this beautiful couple that I met who were Santo Domingo, Pueblo, uh, were selling ju jewelry. And I had a, just a lovely conversation with them that afternoon. And I remember, the, um, you know, we were talking a lot about the jewelry making itself and, um, and the lands that their, um, their tribe was associated with. And they were telling me some about some places that I should go, which was really magnificent. A couple places I did get to, a couple were just too far um, or too remote for me to travel to this time. But in the course of our conversation, um, a one of those famous, you know, New Mexico storms rolled in and I was just taken with the wind. It's interesting that the wind, I mean, here in Georgia and it's been like, you know, 99 degrees forever. And uh, today's our first day of what feels like the coming in of the winds of fall. And so as we were talking, a storm was rolling in and in New Mexico, you know, the skies are just so magnificent. And so I said, excuse me, I just want to take a quick picture of the sky. And they were just uh, really, they they were just so so wonderful and they were uh, sharing with me a blessing of uh, the, the sky or the you know the earth and um, and and talking to me about the jewelry and as I started to walk away that day um, they called me back and they said wait wait we want you to have this you know this pair of earrings and I was like no no let me I said I, I'll take I'll receive them you know from you but let me let me pay you something and I reached in to get um, to get you know a, a 20 or a 10 whatever I had and the woman was just like touched my hand and the man stood up um, and she said it, it's such a blessing and an honor to meet you and to talk with you in this day and uh, you know take these as a reminder of our conversation which was like so beautiful and such a blessing and such a, um, a sign of abundance and um, yeah just so it was, it was so I'm so grateful for it on that particular day and uh, so I've carried that with me and I'm sharing that because so also I did a, a video of uh, some of the the, um, the the chanting and and song that comes through and uh, I, I didn't share it I erased it um, because I felt a little self-conscious about it because I don't really I've never studied any of that. I just do what naturally I'm given to do. And I didn't know how to make sense of like, well, why am I sharing this? And I wanted to know why, and I didn't ever get that insight. And so I didn't, um, I didn't share it with you. Um, and, but as I've been reflecting on everything that happened this summer and 
uh, in these various locations and in particular the conversations that I had and the experiences. Uh, just quickly, one of the other primary uh, things that themes that came up in several conversations was the number of missing um, uh, native women and children. When I was in New Mexico, there was a child that went missing that, whose body was found in the desert. Um, and in California, that conversation came up uh, with someone. Um, I don't even remember how it came up, but it did in the context of a, a larger conversation. And then um, in particular, when I was in Montana with the, the Blackfeet Nation, there was something happening there um, that was earlier this summer. And so my heart, my heart was really touched by all of, all of these things. And, um, and yet, as usual, I, I often have trouble, you know, like t putting that, distilling that down and sharing it in, an, in a form that seems coherent. And um, so when I recorded the video of the, um, the chanting, um, the one, Thing that did seem pertinent to you know um, this channel here, uh, Twin Hearts Ablaze, was that there was a calling forth from again of the energies of the earth and a crying out for the love to come forth and also a blessing from above. And so I kept getting drawn to, particularly in New Mexico, which was in um, through mid-September. Um, I was there. I kept getting drawn to, you know, the sky, the earth and sky, earth and sky, earth and sky. And I, I kept remembering this speech I did when I was, uh, I think I might have mentioned it in another video, actually. When I was in graduate school, I did a a speech. <laughs> I didn't want to do like the normal kind of speech you're supposed to do. I was in a seminary and so I did a speech on um, this the speech that is attributed to and the ideas that are attributed to Chief Seattle and it was you know essentially about uh, being more aware um, of uh, the earth's resources and um, so I was thinking about all of these things in the last couple of weeks and then I had the oddest thing happen um, my um, I've I uh, married and divorced the same man who was just a beautiful man and my best friend in many ways. Um, and twice, I, I, we were married and divorced twice and uh, still see him and, and speak to him often. And um, he's an inspiration. His, he had a younger brother. He, um, his younger brother's name was Joseph. And Joseph passed away. He's my age. Uh, I was born in 1965. and. Um, and Joseph passed away a few years ago when I was living in Ireland and I did not come back for the funeral but the day of his funeral I went hiking to to pay my respects in the way that I could do so and I was hiking in a in a spot that was very uh, sacred land in Ireland uh, it's where there are, uh, it's a megalithic site um, but one of the ones that is not you know um, touristy and and so as such it's just a beautiful sacred day it was raining softly and uh, at the time the time that matched the time they were doing the funeral I took a few pictures um, and the skies literally opened up and changed and there was this this image in the sky um, emerging from the clouds and instantly I knew it was Joseph from the Bible and Joseph as in the coat of many colors Joseph who was uh, you know thrown into the pit by his brothers and then later is there's a reconciliation um, of the the brothers who come to um, Egypt and meet and meet Joseph and in the, in the Bible there you know years go by and then uh, there was a, a time where those who knew not Joseph, who did not remember the story of Joseph. And then, of course, after that, the Exodus um, and, um, and uh, out of Egypt story and the Israelites um, being led to the Promised Land. So all of this is connected for me. It's very, I'm sorry, it's probably coming forth in a big jumble, but stay with me. So my brother-in-law, Joseph, came through like incredibly strongly, and that's the first time that's really happened, trying to get me a message. I was able to discern part of it um, at the time, um, and um, and it, he was showing me that the skies and the the de deliverance essentially of um, of the people uh, who were in bondage or in, enslaved, and then there's a little bit of a, a personal message as well. But 
there was something else that was trying to come through and I could feel it. I knew it was connected to all of this, this entire summer and various conversations and experiences that I've had, but I couldn't quite grasp it until uh, yesterday, at which point um, I realized it was about the name Joseph and not only Joseph from the Bible, but there was uh, something connected to the, the native energy, which w it was very evident to me right away that the story of Chief Joseph and the Nez Pierce was incredibly alive within my heart. And I was reading the book that I've read. I believe it's Bury My Heart at Wounded Knee, but it may be a different one of one of those novels that was written. That's um, one of the most moving things I've ever read. And and so I was, I was, you know, reflecting on that and meditating a bit and, and just connecting in with that. And I started, you know, feeling those, uh, that energy that I get when I'm connected to the land and then, and then the song chants come forward. And so I allowed myself to just to do some of that. And I, I may do some and put it at the end of this video or I, I may leave that for a separate video. But the point is that I understood that Chief Joseph was like literally like here and, and speaking and had a message for us, us being those who are called to the path of sacred partnership. And um, regardless of how that may have changed for you or morphed or, um, you know, you are, you are, we are who we are. Um, I am who I am. And, uh, and so that was really, really, really strong. And so I wrote down some things and then um, he called me to, um, you know, the, the parts that are remembered, of course, of his speech are, I will fight no more forever. Uh, I'll read it at the end of this video. And so he was coming forward and he was showing me, um, he was showing me the, the beauty of trust and surrender. And of course, in the story, he, his people were betrayed uh, because what was promised was not delivered. Uh, but he was showing me um, this beautiful spirit that could not be crushed. And he was showing me the, um, the heart of the people, not just his heart, um, and he had a beautiful heart, but the heart of the people, the one heart of the people. And then he was, I suddenly began thinking uh, a bit or reflecting a bit on um, Jesus coming into the world. And when, when I often uh, reflect on that, I am often thinking of the Gospel of John and that first chapter, the, what's called the, the prologama and, and the, the coming of the light into the world. And um, the more, I suppose, esoteric or the more, you know, um, the higher spiritual perspective of of Jesus the Christ coming into the world and he is always coming into the world and I was being drawn to that again and again and uh, not quite putting the pieces together until I I thought of Mother Mary and Joseph uh, the father of Jesus and I started reflecting on that and I started realizing that you know or I guess he was sort of speaking to me away in a way too I started realizing that that Joseph was a you know he was a man of tradition um and he was suddenly you know experiencing these dreams and this calling to um to uh be betrothed to and to um and to uh, provide shelter and protection for uh, mary and and the child that would be born and that journey that he made is often overlooked, although I have been delighted because um, I've learned so much about Joseph from um, various people who do share about that, um, both in this community and elsewhere. And, and so that's been a real, uh, a real point of um, connection for me in the last couple of years. And so I was thinking about Joseph, the father of Jesus. I was thinking about Joseph, um, one of, of the sons of um, Jacob and the that whole larger story and then the exodus from Egypt and um, the reunion of the brothers and all of the facets of that story and then there was Chief Joseph and then there was my my brother-in-law former brother-in-law who was on the other side and uh, and my former brother-in-law was the six of six sons and um, a very innocent, 
pure heart and spirit that um, this world did not treat very well and he was a little um, this world was too much for him and in that way in some ways there was a connection between myself and and and, and him and so all of these things these facets, these four Josephs, and they, they started coming together for me in, in a way that I don't know that I can articulate. But it's very, very palpable. And there's a, um, an opening, and this relates very much to the vision that I was shown last April, uh, Easter, which um, there was a, a caution to hold off on sharing the full fullness of that vision. But you may have uh, heard me mention it if you follow, have uh, watched any of my other videos since then. Um, I talked about the, the egg that has cracked um, and the, the golden river of light. And um, again, I don't know that I can put this into words, but the, the feeling is that not only has the egg cracked and is that golden river, um, you know, the time is now. And also this connects to me very much to uh, Revelation chapter uh, 21 um, and 22. So you might want to take a look at that. And the new heaven and the new earth, which was also referenced in the passage I shared recently um, in Isaiah, Isaiah 65. And what else did I share from? Uh, Hebrews 12. Um, it's, I don't actually that's not referenced there, but there's um, the unshakable kingdom is referenced there. And so to me, those uh, those two images are very, very strong and have been all summer more and more. And this wind right now, these are the winds of change and it's gentle. It's a gentle wind. It's a favorable wind. It's a beautiful day. And there is such hope and such. It's a beautiful passage that we are in. A beautiful passage from now until about, you know, I would say probably January of 2020. Um, and, and then it's go, you know, 2020, 2021, 2022. Um, my, um, my book and journey, Birds of a Feather, are all about the 33 essential qualities for thriving in that time. But as it pertains to the path of sacred partnership, uh, one of the reasons, I mean, I, I finished the book and, and journey and I have to admit, was quite reluctant. I was quite reluctant to do that. I, it's been hard these last, you know, uh, year, this last year and a half to believe in anything, <laughs> in terms of in ter not not the mission. That's never difficult for me, but in terms of the hope of fulfillment, um, the, of as I had been shown it for so many years, even if you put aside a particular person, um, and I spoke to this in videos back in, you know, I guess it was 2017, maybe 16 even, 17 primarily, I think, where, you know, I saw it so clearly as I had seen it, many of it, much of it since I was a child. And this summer, um, some of those images were very palpable during the times that I was uh, called to specific locations. Um, in particular, this happened in uh, Montana and New Mexico. And, uh, you know, was drawn to specific geographic locations, often not understanding until after the fact what that was really about. But, but it was all purposeful and meaningful. And during some of those times, I saw again the collective of those of us called to this path coming forth together you know, standing side by side in those uh, circles that were that I had seen previously. And it was beautiful. And I do believe it, of course, and in, in that it's all happening in the higher realms. And, and yet there has been in this last year for me, just sort of a complete letting go of everything I thought I knew in terms of what that was going to be and look like. And, uh, and would I be a part of experiencing it even? Although never questioned, you know, my calling to this path has never been in question to me. Um, but all of the ways that it had been shown seemed like, I, you know, I kind of had resigned myself to the fact that the plans changed. and <laughs> I didn't get the memo, but, but that's okay. And so um, as I've been, you know, reflecting on all of this, and then the times when I've been called back to this very potent energy that seems 
incredibly connected to, you know, sort of ancient calling forth and even like the, the fairy energy and the, um, the elemental kingdom and the unspoken truths that are universal reality that sustain that are the light and the life and the love that sustain us all that we are at our core and as i've you know kind of been connecting in with that the last couple of weeks there's been you know these the four joseph stories have been weaving in and out and then there's also been this uh deep and abiding awareness that something something is is something is coming to its full full fruition its fullness the fullness of time and um, so I think I'd like to I'd like to share um, I'm gonna have to do this quietly because I'm in a backyard um, here and but I'm gonna try to share a little bit of um, the so that you can feel the energy of uh, that I, I feel sometimes when this this comes through and then I will close with the story of Chief Joseph and his speech and I will share a uh, painting I did that I uh, went back and found when I started thinking about him so often this this last week um, and oh I just found out this morning by the way that today October 5th is the day he made this speech and he made his surrender it was 1877 so um, much love to the path that he paved in terms of the one heart. Um, so I'll just uh, share a little bit of the, um, the chanting. It always sounds a bit different. It's not any one uh, native uh, language or anything like that, to, at least not to my awareness. I'm going to leave it at that. Thank you for tuning in for this video. Lots of love. Just wishing you every joy and happiness um, wherever you are on this day. Bye. So I'm going to read from biography.com about Chief Joseph. On October 5th, 1877, Chief Joseph formally surrendered to U.S. troops after he and his tribe, the Nez Perce, fought and outmaneuvered their enemies during a three-month-long, 1,400-mile retreat along the west in hopes of reaching Canada. They were only 40 miles away from the border when they finally surrendered. Geronimo, Cochise, Sitting Bull, Red Cloud, Crazy Horse, Chief Joseph, out of the great Native American chiefs and warriors who represented bravery, leadership, strength, and military skill, Chief Joseph was known for his heart. On October 5th, 1877, his speech as he surrendered to General Howard immortalized him in American history forever. I am tired of fighting. Our chiefs are killed. Looking Glass is dead. Tuhul Hul Tsote is dead. The old men are all dead. It is the young men who say yes or no. He who led the young men, Olakut, is dead. It is cold and we have no blankets. The little children are freezing to death. My people, some of them have run away to the hills and have no blankets, no food. No one knows where they are, perhaps freezing to death. I want to have time to look for my children and see how many of them I can find. Maybe I shall find them among the dead. Hear me, my chiefs, I am tired. My heart is sick and sad. From where the sun now stands, I will fight no more forever. Chief Joseph never got to return to the homeland he, as he was promised. Still, despite seeing his tribesmen die of disease and at the hands of the white man, he never gave up 
being the conscience of his people. He never gave up hope that one day Native Americans would achieve freedom and equality. In 1904, Chief Joseph died, according to his doctor, of a broken heart. So may we honor those who, like Chief Joseph, walked this path before us. May we be humble and meet those who perhaps have tried to prevent us from walking our own path or dictate how that was done or uh, provoked a fight or attacked us simply for who we are or for being um, for occupying a space that they thought should belong to them and may we meet them with the heart of a great warrior of love Chief Joseph so just a personal note of thanks to him for the way that he has inspired me for many years Many blessings, much love. See you guys soon.